Hello, in this video I will show you how to create um, a web API, a data server or something like this uh, on, uh, on Microsoft and publish it on a web server, an IIS web server. So what we have here is uh, Visual Studio 2022 that's free, doesn't cost anything. So we create a new project and we say API. So we get uh, by default some uh, proposals. So uh, ASP.NET Core, .NET Core Web API, and then Web API Native AOT, and so on. Take the first one. This, the other stuff is new. D don't take the .NET Framework. This is uh, uh, the old technique. So that's all old. The new one is in here. That's the .NET Core API. Um, and then say, we say next, you see what's coming up. So we say here web API, web, a <coughs> web API, uh, let's say 02, for example. Uh, yeah, 01, that doesn't matter. Web API 1, 01, <laughs> what, what else? And we go to our uh, to my demo folder, and in my demo folder, I will let's see where's my demos. My demo folder, you see, I already did some uh, strange stuff, and um, but I'm recreating that one. We say web API one, then we say create that fold that stuff, and now we are. Uh, starting with the place the solution file. The solution file is the file where all the files are collected or named uh, into the same folder, not in an upwards folder. So and take next, and then we define it for configure for HTTPS. So HTTPS is the leading one for the future, uh, and enable open API. This means there's a Swagger interface. Uh, when you develop something, then you will see that it's uh, that you have an interface, how to use it, and it's in JSON format. So that's the default. And you uh, have a look on there, it's .NET 8 long-term support. That's a good stuff. That's the base, how we should work. Use controllers is the data where behind are uh, handling controllers. And now we say great, you will see that comes up a new API. And folder so this is a my I'm now on my local machine there comes an inter, uh, info page and there always start your app then you, you know what you get there that's my app the app comes up always start that stuff and then you get a browser window that's this one that's what you get then it opens there and you see there comes here a weather forecast um, that's the API when when you when you say to to your app front slash weather forecast and then and run that stuff then you get some results that's the JSON stuff with the brackets and curly brackets and then some d data so that's a data web API this gives you data information or anything else it's always and the format what you see there is uh, JSON. And you see that's the how you may call that. You may also type this one and type it in your browser. And then you say web uh, weather forecast and give me the data. And then you get, get the data. And the machine is always reading this. It doesn't need all the other stuff. And uh, uh, it will just start with that. So you see there's an API, a demo API behind. And you may modify it. And now what we do, we go to build, we go to publish, and we say we publish it in a folder and then we transport it into the uh, all those files, the result files into our app. We selected .NET 8, we said folder, and now we say next. And now you say it creates a bin folder. So the bin folder is below that path. Yeah, when I'm uh, enabling this afterwards, you will see there's a bin folder bin folder release.net 8 publish. I say do it. And I'm also showing that something happens in here. It will be there. So it's that stuff always behind there. It's runtime output. So it's there. 
And now we modify those uh, values. Uh, click in portable is never, never, nobody used in portable. You take the Win64, so it's a 64 bit, bit machine. Leave the framework dependent, the .NET 8, which is the current version, and the release. Release means um, the Swagger interface will not be, uh, some, some local information will not be visible anymore. So by default, when you run it, uh, it is safe that nobody sees uh, temporary stuff, where, is, where are the data and so on. So we leave it in there for the first case. Then we say publish. And now it's running the it's publishing files, the running files into that folder, and it finishes that. Now we go to navigate, and now we see under our folder bin release .NET 8. So that's a subfolder, and then publish folder. We see some files there, and that's all what we need. That's all what we need. Now I will copy it. I will copy it into my uh, in my clipboard. Okay, I copy it. And now I go to my uh, to my server machine. So what we see here in the uh, in that uh, file in, the, in that blue screen is my web server. And um, on my web server, I have uh, um, already installed an Internet Information Server. It's latest someone version ten. Well, it's an Internet Information Server. Nothing like this. Inside is a Kestrel, but doesn't matter. And what I do now on that web server, I, uh, I'm looking for a place where I post all my stuff. So I would say I go to demos and I create a new folder, which is called, what did we call it? Web API 1. And I'm placing all that stuff in there. So I'm placing all runtime files in there. So there's the exe file and the DLL file. These ones, uh, when, when the app opens that stuff, then these ones will run and show the data. There's also the Swagger interface in there, which is not, which is not necessary when it's on release, when it's on the website, because it should be saved there. So I'm closing that folder again. Now I'm showing how to run it on your web server and the IIS web server and afterwards I sh uh, okay let's say what you what you have to install now is yeah it's always the same <laughs> hosting bundle you need the .NET frame the hosting bundle since it's uh, since you want to run something on an IIS on a web server so there's you, therefore you need the hosting bundle and this is always in here go there uh, and now you see that's the .NET 8 click on there and you see now here is the hosting bundle hosting bundle means ASP give me the ability that machine the ability to run an ASP.NET Core application so click on there and you see there's the hosting bundle and then uh, Download that stuff and you will see it now here. That's the uh, hosting bundle. Let's see 8.8 8. 8. Uh, And we will come also to the uh, and, and run it. Let's uh, do it like this. You see you, know, may, you may running that stuff and uh, I already did it So I only may repair or uninstall it. So uh, And now we go back and what we also need we need the uh, we need the .NET runtime. So that's the 64 Windows .NET runtime. Take this one and you see there comes the .NET dash runtime uh, 808 win and then also install that stuff. It's the same stuff. And also, I'm not sure if you need it, but also take the ASP.NET Core runtime, which is uh, uh, it should be a part of the hosting bundle, but I'm not sure if it always is. So also take this one, which is called ASP.NET Core Runtime. Uh, also install that. These three parts, they uh, give you the security that uh, that you the ability that you may run a .NET 8 application on your stuff. So now, whenever you have installed that. You don't have to do anything else. Uh, just open that Internet Information Server on your machine. Internet Information Server, Internet Information Server. You see this one. 
and that's what we have in here. So I leave it in here in the background. Then you have a, a one block and the three sites and application pool. Go into sites and inside sites add a new website. That's my website which I want to show. And we will say that give me a web API one. And now I point to the path where this app is. So I will say, okay, uh, where is it? Here. Uh, it is here under data. And then we have the web demos, demos, and then here web API. Uh, I'm say, okay. And now, uh, now we have this binding block and in the binding block you may either give you uh, an IP so when when somebody when you type the local host 1234 then this value should come on that website but since I'm on a, on a real machine I want to uh, map an outside number an outside name in my case it's code doku.de doku .de, uh, code documentation uh, to that stuff. So I will do it. Uh, I type the name from the outside in there. Code doku de something like this, or with a subname API do code doku something like this. Whatever you have defined in your domain, and uh, I will say okay. Uh, we also select the IP address which is coming in. Should be this one and. Uh, now you say okay when uh, when somebody comes in let's say uh, this uh, at the port on there so this is the HTTP address and uh, I forgot this one go in there uh, edit bindings again and then also add one which is more important the HTTPS and then the same name code doku de and the same HTTP, uh, uh, the IP address. And now you see the port is switching automatically. Um, uh, yeah, might this, might this be right? I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I, I leave it in there. Maybe if if there are, you have, can only have one port at one time uh, on, a, on a machine, then it requ requires the same, uh, the server name identification. And then uh, you need a certificate. The certificate will be in this case the uh, Kodokude. You may use if it's, if you have your own machine the Let's Encrypt, by, which is served by Google. They give you every day a new certificate, and it will automatically be refreshed. So you always have a valid uh, HTTP address. Um, now we have this one. Uh, I will say OK, and then I close it. And now you see on the right side, maybe here, this is my website. And then we say restart that machine where I am, which is uh, labeled on here or focused on here. And then you see this small block which says browse the web name, the outer name, the, the labeled name, the domain name. Uh, click on there and you will see uh, nothing happens. Okay. The reason therefore is that it shouldn't be visible on the outside. And uh, if, you, we, if we take here the weather forecast, then we should get some results on there or not. Weather forecast, uh, it's not there. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. And, oh yeah, it's, uh, because it's automatically on there. Uh, weather forecast, was it weather forecast? So something like this. Now I should get something. Uh, dum 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 dum. What's going wrong? API. Let's go. Let's restart that stuff. And uh, maybe I have to take this one again. And but what uh, I want to, anyways. Uh, that's a great great stuff. I wanted to show you um, how to show it on on your Swagger interface. So the Swagger is, we are going back to our machine since it's still there, on our local machine. And on our local machine, we have this uh, in program, we see uh, some lines which are called here in uh, only in, if it's environment development, then you may use the Swagger, you will see it. Otherwise you won't see it. 
So what we can do in here, we can say, uh, take this out again here. And now you see, run it locally. You see, I'm running it locally, but, but there it's anyways uh, in uh, our local stuff. So, and then you see also there's the, that's the, the path where it goes to execute. And you will see that's the path I copy the path in the path in there, uh, maybe to my local browser. Ah, uh, come on. Where is it? Ah, uh, here it's far, far away. So, uh, this is my, you see, front front slash. Uh, that's the name of that stuff. Uh, I'm placing a link in there. So, and. It's also visible on the front and the name Swagger when you type Swagger there. So Swagger without anything also kind of comes to the same result. Swagger is sometimes in development helpful. Uh, it shouldn't be run, uh, able in to use that in in, uh, in um, release uh, version. But for this type, I'm using it's a demo. I'm doing it here. We go on there, we say publish it again. It's running. We're going to the navigate. We say control X for take all that stuff. And now I'm going back to my machine. That's my machine where I am. The IIS, I will stop the IIS. And I will say the folder which I have to use is go to explore. To take, I removing everything from the old stuff I'm copying in my new stuff and then I will say uh, start again and now I will go to my local machine here on my office I will say uh, go to code doku so I'm outside I'm outside in the world you may do the same and I tape and swagger will be automatically uh, opened so from the outside you automatically see the endpoint and that's uh, so it's running and it naturally it's uh, also running as an API so uh, when you say here try it out go to exit uh, and then execute you will see you get the same as in here uh, you see this one and then copy it you may do the same in here and say now here for my office uh, I will get the result values from there and that's the uh, how to run a web API on your machine. Uh, maybe there are always some small stuff which you have to modify, but uh, this shouldn't be um, uh, a big problem 